Welcome back to this series on APM project management. In the previous video we explored what constituted a project and an overview of what managing a project involves. In this video we're going to take a look at the project environment. Our projects are not standalone isolated pieces of work. They are conducted in real time, usually within a live business environment, and are susceptible to external influences. Understanding this environment and those influences are critical when deciding whether to proceed with a project. Importantly, we will need to ensure that changes to the environment and influences do not negatively impact our ability to deliver that project. If they do, we will need to manage them. Fortunately, we have some tools to help us do that. PESEL is a widely used business tool for just this purpose. It's not limited to project management and you may have encountered it before. Each of the letters in PESEL represents an area of environment or influence that should, we should explore. Our P stands for political. Our first E is for economic. We then have social, technology, legal and finally environmental. We'll take a closer look at each of them in turn. What is the political landscape currently? And what is likely to change soon? If your project is publicly funded, that is, through the taxpayer, you are going to be operating in a politically sensitive environment. You will likely have politicians and media showing an interest in what you are doing and how you are performing. The relationships your country has with others could be a significant factor. Are you able to get the supplies you need or move your goods through certain areas? Are there tariffs or delays involved when working internationally? If you have members of the project team needing to travel, are there visa requirements or restrictions? And what about elections? Upcoming local or general elections could see a change in policy that may either aid or hamper your project. If you're having trouble seeing how political factors could affect a project, pause the video in a moment and consider the following. Building a third runway at Heathrow Airport, the HS2 National Rail Link, or setting up a new site for fracking. Let's move on. Our economic factors are everything to do with money and finance. Does our target audience have the available spending power, or cash, to purchase the new products or services the project will provide? How likely are we to get finance for our project? Are the banks willing to loan us the money for this? Inflation can impact the financial viability of our project, as can interest rates. And what taxes may we need to pay as part of the project or once the project is completed? Does your product or service attract VAT or sales tax? And what about the exchange rate? Working across monetary boundaries can be risky and a good exchange rate today does not guarantee a good exchange rate at the end of the project. Our social environment is all about people in society and how they may feel about our project. Will they accept this project or the products resulting from this project? If you are constructing a new coal-based power station, you can expect criticism in today's world. What about the local residents? How will they feel about any dis disruptions and disturbances to their everyday life while the project is being undertaken? Consider the not-in-my-backyard attitude that locals often have. Our planet is made up of huge range of cultures and beliefs which should be respected. However, that may also provide us with some challenges. Are you working in an environment or with nations that have different cultural views? such as women not being treated equally as men in some nations? Do they have a particular way of doing business? Do they celebrate the same events as you? What about accepted holiday or religious periods? When is the best time to release your new dancing Father Christmas robot? Your restaurant opening is planned for mid-May. That's right, in the middle of Ramadan, during which Muslims fast between dawn and sunset. Technology has completely changed our world over the past 50 years. Home computing, drones, artificial intelligence, robots, 
Have you considered what technology exists that can support your project or perhaps make it entirely irrelevant? What is likely to be available in the next few years or decades that may be a factor in your project? Automation is a subset of the above. If your new factory project is based on technology from 10 years ago, is, going to be competitive, is it going to be competitive when the project is complete? Could 3D printing, for example, undermine your production process? Or could you incorporate 3D printing to enhance your productivity? Technology has also altered the way people can access information. Is there another way your customers could get the same result without accessing your projects, services and products? Our legal environment is often straightforward, but it still requires some thought. Are we able to remain compliant with legal requirements during our project and will our products and services produced by the project be compliant? And what may change in the future? Certainly we are seeing some laws uh, come in around the areas of waste pollution and carbon emissions. Does your team require certain certifications to undertake tasks in the project? Or do you need special legal permission for anything such as building permissions? We must bear in mind that legal impacts on our projects are not just about the project itself but extend to the results of our project. Is the produce compliant? What if somebody needs to return something? Do we understand our legal obligations? Environmental factors are anything to do with how our project or the results of our project will affect the environment or will be impacted by the environment. How are you going to manage your waste? We need to consider emissions such as greenhouse gases. Will our project uh, create large amounts of noise, light or dust? What is our packaging made of? Is it non-recyclable plastics or paper-based materials? How are we going to transport resources and the finished goods? You may have already noticed that a number of um, these factors can fall into a number of categories. Packaging materials could arise in social, technological, legal and environmental. Willingness to buy may be impacted by not just financial capability but also social trends and environmental concerns. We don't see many shops selling real fur anymore. Information access again could rise in social, technological or legal. This of course is fine. Just ensure that you've considered all of the factors from all of the angles. Let's move on to the second tool we need to look at, the SWOT analysis. Just like PESEL, each of the letters in SWOT are indicative of an area we need to examine. Our S is for strengths. Here we look at our own organisation, team or self. It's looking at our internal environment. What are we good at? Some examples could be we have a strong financial position, we have an experienced project team, or we own critical patents. Things like that. Our W stands for weaknesses. Again, we're looking internally here at our own company and its people. Some examples could be that we have a poor appetite for change. In other words, we don't like change. Maybe we've got staff that are poorly trained in certain areas that may be critical to our project. Or we've got a reputation that's been damaged from something that happened before. It's important to know what we are good at and not good at in order to make judgments on our likelihood of success in the project. O is for opportunities. Here we would list anything that could potentially be exploited to our advantage. We can draw on the results of our PESEL analysis, our strengths and our weaknesses in order to evaluate these. Perhaps a competitor has recently suffered a setback and there's an opportunity for us to take some more market share or build customer relations. Threats is our last consideration here and again we can look back at our PESEL strengths and weaknesses to help. If one of your weaknesses is customer relations, could undertaking this project make that even worse and see customers leaving in large numbers for a competitor? 
Usually when conducting a SWOT analysis you will see it laid out in a table similar to this. That helps us keep it ordered and presentable and able to reflect on how the different aspects may interact with each other. Together, PESEL and SWOT give us, a, give us quite a thorough understanding of our current position, enabling us better to make judgments. Be aware that there are many other tools and factors that could be useful too, although these are the main ones you need to focus on if you're considering sitting the PFQ exam. This brings us to an end of this topic. If you want to know more about these tools, there's a wealth of information available at the end of a Google search. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you have, please leave a like and a comment below. In our next video, we'll be looking at the project life cycle. Until then, take care.